righty. I'm just going to check the live stream and see how it's looking before we kick it off. This is Chief Sergeant Theronis Perez. It looks good. Okay. okay. Excellent. Then we can get started with our recordings. PC recording and backup recording are rolling. Cloud recording on the way. Good morning and welcome to today's remote New York City Council joint hearing of the committees on small business and the committee on technology. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their video. To minimize disruption, please silence your electronic devices. And if you wish to submit testimony, you may do so via email at testimony at council dot nyc dot gov that's testimony at council dot nyc dot gov thank you very much for your cooperation we are ready to begin good morning i am council member holden chair of the committee on technology and i'm pleased to be joined today by my good friend from the bronx council member mark Jonai, chair of the committee on small businesses uh, I would like to welcome you all to our hearing today on the film industry. Uh, with streaming demand at a record high, it looks like the industry will continue to grow. And uh, that's very, very important for New York City and New York State. For example, Netflix recently opened a new studio in Bushwick. Uh, Apple has secured new uh, leases space in uh, Kaufman uh, Story of Studios for studio production for their new content and Steiner Studios has declared expansions for their studio space spaces in to accommodate increased demand. However, while the film industry is an important part of our city's uh, recovering economy, we must address how their productions impact our communities. And uh, I am all too familiar with the complaints that my constituents log and, and residents uh, in, in, the, uh, in the district and in the boroughs uh, regarding some disruptive uh, behavior or impact of that production sets can have on their lives. From trailers blocking streets to loud generators and glaring floodlights, our residents and small businesses are being asked to deal with unfavorable conditions and they get little relief, often finding that numbers, the numbers, uh, the phone numbers that are provided to call in case of such circumstances lead to dead ends and full voicemail inboxes. So, um, you know, in 2019, we had a hearing regarding the film industry's expansion in New York City. We heard directly uh, from the public on how productions can be negligent uh, with their surroundings at times and troublesome for many New Yorkers. The hearing was primarily due to a film shoot that took over the busiest commercial uh, strip of my district right before Christmas. And just recently, the same commercial strip in my district was used as an overflow parking space for production equipment and trucks that were filming miles away uh, in another council member's district. And that was unsettling to say the least. Several errors were made, um, which led to this incident. Um, our small businesses are being affected by the operations of these productions at a critical time when they are still recovering from the pandemic. These conditions must be addressed as the film industry expands. So we have to really coordinate some more on, on this. And to this end, we found that New York City 311 service uh, requests data set on the city's open data portal, portal, which tracks all service requests, including complaints filed with NYC 311, does not have a distinct category for complaints related to the film industry. So that's what we're gonna talk about today a little bit. Without a separate category of data for complaints related to film production, it, it is, you know, becomes difficult to take a deeper look into the nature of complaints related to the film industry. We should look at other cities to see how their policies can uh, improve us and over here in New York City. Los Angeles, California, for instance, has a fee schedule that details various fees that a production studio must be aware of when applying for a permit and has a film permit fee of $795 that works for up to 10 locations while also requiring that a permit application be submitted at least three business days before filming. 
Atlanta, Georgia uh, has a fee schedule that includes various fees for locations, road closures, on-site services, and more, while also requiring an application submission of at least three days before filming. They also require that permits, uh, permits asking for a full street closure be submitted at least five business days before filming. On the other hand, New York City has a singular permit application fee of only $300 and accepts applications submitted at least 48 hours in advance. And so that's what you know, we're gonna to discuss today. And I've, I've had some, uh, some uh, bills that might address some of this in the past. So furthermore, MOM's website does not contain clear information on how many locations a film permit can be used for. So uh, clearer communications, better responsiveness, and more consideration are essential for us to benefit from this relationship fully. Uh, I will now turn it over to my colleague, council member, and co-chair, council member, Mark Jonai, for his opening remarks. Thank you, my dear friend, uh, Robert Holden, for uh, co-hosting this uh, town, this council hearing with me. Good morning. I'm council member Mark Jonai, chair of the committee on small business, and I'd like to welcome you to our joint hearing with the committee on technology chaired by my dear friend, Robert Holden. Our hearing today focuses on the film industry's impact on New York City's economy, city residents, and our small businesses. New York City is one of the most sought after cities for film shoots in the world. From the city's iconic skyline to our diversity of locations, New York City is an attractive location for film and television shoots. Since the early 2000s, the film and television industry have expanded in the city. The rise in popularity of streaming services like Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu have further increased the demand for new content and stimulated a surge in the television production in our city. The expansion of the film industry has certainly had positive impacts on the New York City economy. It has contributed billions of dollars to the city and also provided new employment opportunities for city residents. To the associations, representatives, and members of the film industry that are here today, I thank you for choosing New York City. I, I hope you have had the opportunity to enjoy our great city, its vibrant culture, and contribute to the local economy. Mom and pop shops, are obviously at the center of what makes New York City great. While I welcome the expansion of the film industry, I wanna make sure our small businesses are benefiting from this expansion too. Our small businesses are starting to recover from the pandemic, the most serious challenge to the small business economy in the city's history. Thousands of our small businesses closed over the past two years and our small businesses are facing more hurdles than impede their ability to succeed. The expansion of the film industry and resulting commercial activity in the city should be a major boost to the revenues of our small businesses. Small businesses receive a large percentage of their profits from city residents passing by on the street, blocking a small business visibility or closing down the street can be a hindrance to daily small business operations. Similarly, small businesses are sometimes not being given proper notice of when filming will be occurring in the neighborhoods. Small businesses rely on deliveries to their stores and mom and pop restaurants depend on their customers being able to park near their store to grab food and beverages to go. Small businesses must be given sufficient notice to prepare for reduction in foot traffic by scheduling fewer staff to arranging commercial deliveries. Without enough notice, businesses may be overscheduling staff or preparing to receive deliveries that may not be able to get down a blocked street. Although many productions play, the, play by the rules, not all of them do. It's important that we be clear about the resource communities have when film shoots go wrong. And residents need to know what to expect from film shoots, what impacts may be anticipated and what is not allowed. 
When we discussed these issues with MOM at our hearing in 2019, they promised to look into and address the negative impacts facing our small businesses. I look forward to hearing about the steps they've taken to ensure that both the film companies and small businesses benefit from the film production. Given the financial impact of the pandemic on this city, I urge film productions to come to New York City and to shop locally, support our local mom and pop shops. Our small businesses are an essential aspect of New York City culture and economy, and I can promise you they will deliver a good product. Allow them to benefit from your expansion and small businesses and the film industry can thrive together. Before concluding, I wanna recognize my, actually, um, Bob, maybe you'll recognize the council members that have joined this. I can't do it from my phone, but I do wanna thank you, Bob, for spearheading this hearing, uh, making sure that we take this as a priority. And with that, I wanna thank my legislative director, Austin Sackler, my small business committee staff, legislative council, Stephanie Jones, our policy analyst, Noah Meixler, and financial analyst Aliyah Ali for their hard work in preparing for this hearing. In addition, I wanna wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and all the blessings of the holiday. Thank you, council member John I, uh, and I appreciate your comments. And uh, I just thought we've been joined by council members Yeager, Dinowitz, Brooks Powers, Rosenthal and Rodriguez. Uh, I'll note, I will now turn it over to committee council, Irene Bohofsky. Thank you, Chair Holden, and thank you, Chair Joanai. I'm Irene Bohofsky, the committee council to the Committee on Technology, and I will be moderating this hearing. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that you will be on mute until you called on to testify, at which point you will be unmuted by the host. Please be aware that there could be a delay in muting and unmuting, so please be patient. We will be calling on panelists to testify. I will be calling on panelists to testify. Please listen for your name to be called as I announce the panelists. We will first be hearing testimony from the administration followed by testimony from members of the public. During the hearing, if council members would like to ask questions of the administration or a specific panelists, please use the Zoom raise hand function and I will call on you. We will be limiting council member questions to five minutes, which includes the time it takes to answer the question. Also, please note that all panelists, aside from those from the administration, will be limited to five minutes. When you call to testify, please state your name and the organization you represent for the record. I will now call representatives of the administration to testify. We will be hearing testimonies from Anne Del Castillo, Commissioner of Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, as well as Lieutenant Nicholas Minor from New York City Police Department's Movie and TV Unit, who will be also available for questions and answers. At this time, I will administer the affirmation of each representative. I will call on each of you individually for a response. So please raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions. Commissioner Del Castillo. I do. Lieutenant Miner. I do. Thank you. I now invite Commissioner Del Castillo to present her testimony. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chairs Holden and Joan I and members of the City Council Committees on Technology and Small Business. Um, I am Ann Del Castillo, Commissioner of the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, otherwise known as MOM. Um, I'm joined today by Josh Levin, MOM's Associate Commissioner of InterGov and Community Affairs, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Nicholas Minor, Head of the NYPD Movie and TV Unit, and MOM's Senior Leadership Team. 
Thank you for the opportunity to discuss the current state of film and television production in New York City with you today. I have had the distinct honor of leading MOM since I was appointed commissioner in the spring of 2019. Our agency works to strengthen New York City's creative economy and make it accessible to all. Um, MOM actually has four divisions, the Office of Film, Theater and Broadcasting, which coordinates film and television production throughout the five boroughs, NYC Media, the city's official television and broadcast, uh, radio broadcasting entity, our programs division, which oversees industry development and workforce and educational initiatives in film, television, theater, music, advertising, publishing, and digital media, and the Office of Nightlife, which supports the sustainable development of New York City's nighttime economy. We will also be home to the Press Credentials Office starting in early 2022. When I appeared before you all in fall of 2019, I outlined some of the ways I had intended to change our approach to film and television production permitting and I'm proud to report that we've made significant progress on those ideas. First, we hired a new intergovernmental and community affairs team to strengthen relationships with council members and communities to establish more open lines of communication and better understand the unique characteristics of our diverse communities across the city. This has allowed for more collaborative solution seeking and troubleshooting as issues arise. For example, when a production posted signs in, advancing, in advance of landing in a Brooklyn neighborhood, Residents voiced concerns to their council member who in turn reached out directly to me in my office and we were able to arrive at a mutually agreeable solution. Additionally, we have taken a more proactive approach to anticipating impacts, filming impacts in communities. For example, um, actually as a result um, of conversations we had with council member Holden um, following the last hearing, we've limited the amount of filming during the holiday season along busy commercial shopping corridors. And finally, we updated the code of conduct for film permit holders, and we made it easier to find on the film permit webpage so that the public knows exactly what rules apply to productions. Nevertheless, we could not have anticipated, what we could not have anticipated was just a few months after that hearing in 2019, the COVID-19 pandemic would force a shutdown of the entire creative community. The Department of Labor reported that employment in arts, entertainment, and recreation fell by 66% in 2020. Film and television production came to a standstill. But as in previous crises, like 9-11 and Hurricane Sandy, the industry quickly jumped into action to assist with relief efforts from distributing catered meals to healthcare workers, providing gloves, masks, and other PPE from their medical shows to hospitals, and even producing supplies like face shields and gowns for the city. When New York City was in need, the industry stepped up and we thank them for their generosity. When the state approved the return of film production and the industry began developing protocols for safe return, MOM was very deliberate in ensuring productions return to communities across the five boroughs safely. We imposed stricter protocols than the state guidance. For example, we limited the size of cast and crew for on-location filming and required that productions maintain minimum distances from hospitals, outdoor dining, and open streets. We provided plain language guidance and sample production safety signs. We also sent out weekly updates to keep industry stakeholders and elected officials apprised on the latest guidance and status of reopening. We've been proud to see productions take the initiative to support local businesses, using them as featured locations and for catering services and holding areas. The return of film and television production is a testament to the collaboration among industry, city and state government and community partners. It is a shining example of New York City's recovery success stories. MOM works diligently to ensure that New York City continues to be a thriving center for film and television production and at the same time causes minimal disruption to neighborhood residents and local businesses. The city's expanded uses of our streets through new bike lanes, transportation projects, pedestrian plazas, and outdoor dining requires MOM to be even more flexible, collaborative, and responsive in our approach, in our approach with communities, productions, and our sister agencies. By the time a crew lands a production in a given area, MOM has already limited that production schedule size and location according to the specific, specific needs and characteristics of that particular community and surrounding neighborhoods. Because every community, every street and every production is different. For example, when a given production was returning to film in the early days of reopening, we were able to work with them to reduce their parking, parking footprint by utilizing nearby hotels around Lower Manhattan for holding and hair and makeup instead of using several campers. In addition to reducing the impact on parking in the neighborhood, it served to increase hotel occupancy during a time of high vacancy. 
The benefits of our thriving film and television production sector ripple out far beyond the boundaries of any given location shoot. Film and television production create jobs and opportunities for New Yorkers who have never set foot on a set. We hear many stories from local business owners who tell us how business generated by productions has helped them grow and thrive. For example, a given production um, may generate over 1,200 jobs and $20 million in wages. And beyond that, they will spend over 600,000 on lodging, another 600,000 on catering and other food items and 500,000 on hardware and lumber supplies. Each year in the course of doing their jobs, this industry spends over $80 billion right here in New York City. So they aren't just helping themselves, they are contributing to our shared success and now our city's shared recovery. Many people assume that the term production industry means big Hollywood studios, but the fact is those studios are the ones who decide to bring the productions here. The production industry itself, New York City's production industry, the ones on the ground filming in neighborhoods across the city comprise 185,000 New Yorkers, tradespeople, actors, artisans, artists, and small business owners. They are our family, our neighbors, our friends, and they are all New Yorkers who are earning a living in their city. We appreciate the tremendous impact that this industry has on our city's economy. And my agency continues to strive to make sure that filming works for everyone. We know that there is still work to be done. And we look forward to continuing to work closely with you and with every community to ensure that this great New York City success story continues. And now I'm happy to answer your questions. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, I just want to um, uh, recognize uh, Council Member Lander has joined us. And um, I just want to give um, the first questions, uh, series of questions to my co-chair, Mark Jonai, because I know he's got a number of um, food giveaways that um, he's uh, operating under today. So I want to thank him for joining us. And take, take, uh, take the floor, uh, Chair Jonai. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council Member Holden. Commissioner, can you help walk me through the process from the time that there's a production notification to you? How far in advance do they have to apply for a permit? When is a permit issued in advance of the shoot days? Certainly. Um, thank you, uh, Council Member. Um, I want to be clear that uh, the permitting, our, our office permits um, productions that require access to location, uh, public uh, property. Um, uh, so not every production, but those that require access to public property. Um, by the time, uh, so a permit application isn't actually submitted until we've gone through an entire process with that production. Um, uh, the production will come to us and it, it really depends on the um, uh, the type of production, but they'll come to us and um, let us know that they're intending to film in the city, that they have a certain number of locations that they're looking at, um, some of which may pan out, some of which may not. And we have a production meeting with them um, and review what are the goals that they're trying to achieve through their filming, right? And if there are um, certain neighborhoods that they're thinking of, um, we try to inform them of the opportunities and challenges in that neighborhood. Um, the challenges of permitting, but also the opportunities to partner with local businesses. And under our code of conduct, they, re they are required to reach out to um, uh, the elected officials um, and uh, work with them to uh, coordinate activity. By the time we issue the permit, we have already limited the size of their parking. We have directed where they're going to land in a given neighborhood um, and the duration for which they will be there. So they can't actually submit an application for a permit um, that would get approved until we've gone through all of those steps with them. Um, once they submit it, we check to make sure that the application says everything that we agreed on and then we approve it and that triggers a notification. It's all part of the citywide event coordination and management database. Um, so it's certainly part of a larger infrastructure um, and when they submit the application and we hit approve, that's when the flash notification goes to the council. So after the discussions and the options uh, have gone through, how long before the shoot is that typically? Is it weeks, months before? No, it's um, typically two days in advance of when they're going to land in a neighborhood. And that is for a number of reasons. Um, I want to back up for a moment, though, and say that as
as we're in the process of discussing and finalizing their permit, if we know that they're going to be in an area um, that they're looking to land in a particular area, they are encouraged to uh, do outreach to the neighborhood and post signs that they will be taking parking in that neighborhood. No, uh, thank that you too much. I, 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 maybe I'm not asking a question mm -hmm. correct. So the question is, after you've gone through your initial meetings, you've defined the neighborhood, the needs, the wants, uh, and provided feedback and input uh, on your end, mm -hmm. how long before they actually shoot after all that is done? So is it weeks in advance that this is no. all completed? It depends on the project. If it's a, if it's a television series, uh, which we have a lot of here in New York City, it will typically be within a couple of, within 48 hours that they will land in a given neighborhood. If it's a, it, uh, at the time that we're having this, the, um, when we finalize the permit, it can be uh, within 48 hours of the permit being issued. No, no, but before the permit is applied for, after your conversations mm -hmm. and the time. I see, right, sorry. Um, so after our conversations, if it's a feature film production, it could be weeks or months because they have to determine whether or not um, uh, all of the locations that they want are okay. And, and then they have to schedule and book hotels and book the cast and all of that, right? So that can be um, weeks or months. In the case of a television series, it could be within a week because they're operating on a more regular round the clock schedule and they have to deliver a series every week. So at a minimum, it's a week before they actually apply for the permit that they know when they're going to be there uh, and what locations they've identified and work all of the uh, particulars out with you. Maybe that's when they know that they want to go to a place, but if it rains or if we discover that there's a conflict with the permit, they will have to move their location. And that could be in as soon as two days. So that's why we have the two day turnaround because it can take a lot for them to land these productions and figure out where they're gonna go. So it can be, they may wanna do a stunt on a given day and they can say that this is where we want to film within that week. But if we realize that there are certain things that um, certain elements that we can't accommodate during that time, they will they will shift their location. Commissioner, these are some of them are very large productions, some are small. There Indeed. is no, and the, the, my, the answer that I'm getting is that it can happen within a week before uh, the actual permit that they're going to put into play all of the moving parts uh, to create a production. I, I don't think they move that quickly. <laughs> I, I just, some of these productions. But sure they do actually. They do because they're filming it, particularly with our television productions, they're based here year round and they have stages that they're based at and it's a logistical operation. So they will they will move, a court, especially right now in time of COVID when there are limitations on people's ability to travel or they have certain contractual arrangements where they won't travel. It is that tight of a turnaround. Commissioner, the issues that we have is typically with the larger productions, not the small, the larger productions that come in and they take blocks and blocks of parking spaces, close off blocks at a time. Uh, I don't think that type of a production is done within 48 hours, uh, mobilization that is, where they put all the pieces in play. What I'm trying to get from you, and, and I maybe I'm, being a little too difficult here, don't mean to. These are very complicated, many moving parts for these productions. And as they're going through the steps with the 48 hour notice uh, to our small business and our communities that are impacted, including the community board, the elected officials, uh, and the, uh, the streets that are being impacted, whether they be residential or commercial, I'm trying to get a, a sense of how we how can we give more advanced notice, and I'm not referring to the few hour setups that are limited in scope that can be done because it's a very small production. The the impacts that we have are from large productions where they block off uh, streets for days at a time, don't show up. 
uh, although they have no parking permits, or they show up outside of the permit and the notifications that were given, and businesses and residents are not able to prepare. I don't know if you want to follow up on that, Commissioner. Um, I, I think there's a difference between the planning of the shoot and when the permit is issued, right? And so as part of our code of conduct, we do require the productions to do outreach to the neighborhoods so that um, to the local officials and the community boards that you are aware of what's going to land. The specifics of what actually will land doesn't get issued until two days before because there are multiple factors that have to be taken into consideration, right? And so that there's, there is a difference, right? So while we may know that a production is going to land in a given neighborhood, exactly how many trucks, exactly when the call times are going to be, those typically don't get worked out until um, uh, until later in the process. And all of that has to be stipulated on the permit. What is that later in the process? That's what I'm trying to get at. What is that later in the so, process? In other words, we may know that someone wants to land in uh, Times Square, right? No. But how many people they're going to have show up on that day? How many people? Like, that has to be specified on the permit, but they may not know that until the very last minute because until two days before because they have to confirm travel. Um, they have to confirm who the actors are going to be, which actors are going to be available, right? It's, it's, it, it, it actually is quite a logistical piece. The parking is one piece of many parts of the production. Um, so what I can say and what I hear what you're saying and what we really have been trying to work on at our office is cultivating stronger relationships with the communities. It's why I hired our intergovernmental and community affairs unit. We did not actually have a dedicated unit that was focused on building relationships with you and your colleagues and the communities. That is something that we put into place immediately when I started. And it's something that they had been working on and that they continue to work on is understanding, getting to know all of you and getting to understand the various needs of the communities. And part, the benefit of that is that we will eventually, it's still a process, get to understand how the communities move and operate, where certain areas are more um, amenable to parking, where, where we can land specific footprints. Ideally, ultimately, what we would have is a level of predictability that when a production comes into a specific neighborhood, we know where that production is going to land consistently so that there is a predictability for the neighborhood and for the productions about how they're going to function in a particular neighborhood. I know we are not there yet, but that is what we have been striving for, for sure. And I think we've demonstrated that in some of the actions that we've taken since our last hearing. Commissioner, thank you for tr for giving an explanation. It's not the right explanation that I'm looking for. Let's look at the other flip point. Our small businesses and our residents, they typically make arrangements days and weeks in advance for a move in, move out, for construction, uh, for deliveries, they schedule these things days and weeks and sometimes even months in advance. A 48-hour notice just isn't enough when we're impacting communities. And the idea is, what can we do to give further advance notice? So there is and no support. Chair, I understand the, it's not going to be perfect. I don't yeah, no, as it's stipulated, Chair, the, the, what can we do is what we have been trying to do, which is to work with your offices to and encouraging the productions to work with your offices so that you know what to expect when that 48-hour notice goes up. You would have a sense that they're going to be in your area at within a certain time frame, and once the permit goes up, you'll know exactly what to expect on that day. Commissioner, I'm sorry. I come from the small business world. I cannot prepare 48 hours in advance for a major delivery. That's done normally days and weeks before. No, but if you know, sir, that we are going, that a production is going to be coming at a particular time, you would be able to advise us on where parking can happen at a particular no, time. No, and I'm this sorry. is what I mean about developing a sense of predictability. Right. So, yes, you may schedule your businesses, our businesses, our city's businesses 
have to have a level of predictability. They know that they get deliveries on X, Y, and Z day. So if they know that a film production is coming on a particular How day, they know, they'll, know, they'll know that when a production comes, sir, please let me finish because it might yes. become more clear, right? So they'll know that whenever a production lands, whatever day it is, they're going to be in a particular block so that when they get the 48 hour notice, they'll know that they're going to be on X side of the street and their deliveries will come a certain way. That's what I mean in terms of predictability. You know, we are not looking to hurt small businesses. We are looking to develop a level of predictability in neighborhoods. And it's the same, it's the same challenges with accessing public space, right? Like it, there may be a construction project that goes up or a public works project that has to go up, right? And they're gonna schedule it at a particular time that is not going to necessarily be advantageous to businesses, but the businesses know when that project goes up, this is how the traffic will be redirected, or this is where their customers will be direct, redirected to. That's the level of predictability that we're looking to achieve. Commissioner, it's, I'm not understanding, and maybe it's me. What is the pre, when can you predict a shoot, or the, a production is going to happen? When is that information? With absolute, with absolute certainty, 48 hours in advance. But that's what I just said. And you, you you're, I think maybe you're not, I'm not asking correctly. Within 48 hours is not enough notice for a small business to cancel a delivery to cancel a move out or a move in. Maybe they're coming into a location for the first time. They're delivering their office furniture. Maybe it's a, con a contractor that has scheduled delivery for a major project. It That's is why we have the notifications go out so that if they see the notification and they understand that there's a problem that they can call our office as they have with these other situations. There have been situations where there has been an expected activity to occur in a neighborhood They've called us as soon as the notification has gone out, and we've worked out with your colleagues' offices how we can accommodate all of the activity that needs to happen in that area at that time. That's exactly what happened in um, uh, uh, in certain situations, like the one that I described in Brooklyn. The there was a problem when they saw that a production was landing. They called us, and we worked with the council member in that area to find an alternate solution. But that and, that's, and, it, and, and it worked out. That only happened 48 that's hours. Ahead of that, correct? Yes. 48 hours. Yes. So prior to 48 hours, there is no notice given to a community. That's the point I'm trying to make. The production select the communities based on engagement with the communities. But they don't reach out to the community. Uh, that's, not, that's not entirely true. I, I respectfully, that's that's not entirely yeah. true. By and large, the productions do reach out to communities. Certainly, they fail in certain instances, and we are continuing to work to correct that. But I'm asking a question: How far in advance should they typically reach out? There's a 48-hour mandatory. Is that correct? 48 hours supposed to reach out. No, the 48 hours is the notice to you when the permit has been issued. The outreach has happened before that because they have to figure out that that's the community that they want to film in. When are they reaching out to the actual community to let them know that on X day, we expect to be in your neighborhood? That it will vary X according to the size and scale and type of production. That's my point. You're not giving me an answer. Maybe you can't. And if you can't give an answer, I'm okay with that. But we're spinning our wheels here. I keep asking, how far in advance can a production actually do outreach? And if the answer is they're not required to give any advance notice more Sir, than... I, I didn't say any of that. I just explained that it will depend on the size, scale, scope, and type of production when they will do outreach. But they are required to do outreach to the communities. That's how they're able to determine whether they want to film in a community is based on, like, they're scouting locations. And so they have to do outreach to the community. They're filming somewhere in that community, and they're working with someone in that community, so they're doing outreach in the communities. Commissioner, scouting a community is completely different than, hey, I'm shutting down this street. 
I, I also have to correct something. We actually don't shut down streets. We, our office does not shut down streets. We take the parking, but we don't block, we don't shut down traffic on streets. We, we, our permits do not allow for that. And I'm happy to show you the permits that do not allow for that. It might be tighter. It might be, it might be a tighter pass through. Um, and we may do intermittent closures, but we do not shut down streets for film permits. Commissioner, I just walked through a few months ago, a street that was closed off entirely for a production. They even created rain. They put cranes I'm happy in. To, I'm happy to follow up with you on that particular production and find out what the specifics of the permit were. I literally walked, I had to wait to walk through. There was no cars I can get through. They literally shut down the whole street. And it was in a Wall Street section. I'm not aware of the specific production that you're talking about, but I'm happy to follow up with you after this hearing to look into it and see what the terms of the permit were. So again, I'm gonna ask the question in a different way. Scouting is not the same as notifying a commercial corridor or residents of a neighborhood that we will be taking up parking, that this area will be shut off there'll be limited access or limited parking. That They don't do that during a scouting process. As if they're scouting a location, it's, they're scouting. They're not notifying. I'm asking, is there any way we can give more notice than the 48 hour advance notice, which currently is in the code of conduct? You don't want to answer that. No, I can't answer that, sir. I think we discussed this the last time too. We have determined that 48 hours is the right amount of time in as much as in the event that there is inclement weather, for example, there's a snowstorm, that production is not going to come. And they're not going to know that until 48 hours in advance. They're going to have to make alternate arrangements. Whereas if we gave a week advance notice, the businesses will be disrupting their their deliveries for something that's not going to occur. And so this is the balance that we're trying. So so speaking frankly, this is the balance that we're constantly trying to adopt. We want to give enough notice so that people know to anticipate that there's going to be a disruption, but we don't want to give too much because they might anticipate a disruption that will ultimately not occur because circumstances change and they're not going to be able to film in that area. Commissioner, you made that decision for a small business and for a residential neighbor that's going to be impacted. That 48 hours is more than enough notice. That is not fair. I know small businesses, they cannot, they're not that fluid. I, I, you determined that 48 hours is enough notice based on, on a theory it's, it's of... It's actually predicated no on, on other types of notice that are given for um, street um street construction for paving it's it's actually grounded in that similar type of notification it's not something that we made up there's precedent for it in other notifications of communities where street activities will be happening in their neighborhoods commissioner i hope that we can start looking at this a little bit differently in engage i'm not attacking the movie production industry and i don't want to give them a burden that no, they, and, I, that, and I hope you understand. I'm trying to. No, I don't. Help That's you understand why where why it's structured this way. That it's not predicated on a whim. I certainly I do not have that discretion. I would I would be in a very different place if I had that kind of discretion. Um, but it really is grounded in practice of other notification and the type of activities um, that would require notice to communities of street activities. By the way, street activity permits are given 30 days in advance. Communities can prepare. Residents know. Commercial corridors know. They apply to the community board. But I'm not going to go down that avenue with Road paving is not. Works, when there's a public works project, a large project, they're given the community board is given advance notice, and they're given uh, notice that there will be a water shutoff close to the time that mm -hmm. they're going to be doing the work. But there is in it much advance notice given before that. And what I'm asking you is that maybe we should be looking at this in a way where how do we create a, a partnership where we don't hurt film industry 
or small businesses or residential communities that we give them in an advance notice as much as possible. And 48 hours is not enough. It really isn't enough. Okay, well, we're happy to continue the conversation with you to see what other proposals are on the table. I will be here the next time. I'm also happy to meet with you so that we can explain the specific logistics of how the industry is works so that we can make sure that we're we're working together at for solutions. Because I, I do understand it is very difficult to understand how production works. We tried this in 2019. It's you know almost two well, years sure, later. We did have a pandemic that interrupted our conversations, unfortunately. And and we are we have been working with each of you to um, try to bring back production in an equitable way, um, while also attending to the economic recovery of our other creative sectors. And so I welcome that for sure, absolutely. We want to ensure that the economic recovery of the city benefits everybody. And so do I, but commissioner, I'm going back to notice. And what you're telling me is it, because it's so complicated that it's very difficult to give out, to give more than 48 hour notice on a production of a movie that, or a production that could impact communities, I don't think is fair. I don't believe, and I know our businesses don't feel it's fair. So when you say you're happy to work with me, with me on this, you don't have to work with me. Work with the communities that are impacted. Go talk to those businesses. Go talk to those residential communities. They will share with you what their issues are and why 48 hours is not enough. We've just done a whole spin it took 20 minutes, and we got no answers and no commitment. 48 hours is not enough. I may not like the answer. You may not like what I'm asking you to do, but 48 hours and notice to a community is not enough. And in many cases, they're not doing a 48-hour notice anyhow. They just pop up. And you're going to say, well, please let me know who they are, and we'll look into it. And I'm sure that will just continue to spin the wheel. But thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Robert, uh, I, that's the questions that I have. I'm sure you have many, many more. And I want to thank you for the courtesy. Thank you, uh, Chair uh, Jonai, for the questions. And um, I agree with you, by the way. I, I've said this over and over again, that 48 hours is not enough time for the tremendous impact. Most of these film shoots do have an impact, some more than others, obviously. But just 48 hours is not enough for uh, small businesses or the community and uh, and it's done in other cities by the way commissioner it's done four days in other cities three days in some cities i don't know how it's set on two days in our communities or in our city but um we need to look at that so i don't want to um uh, beat a dead horse here but it is a a concern and it, and it has been a concern for some time uh, i just want to recognize that we've been joined by council member eric ulrich um, and I'll ask a few questions. I do have to jump off for a, a, a vote soon, and, uh, and and I'll turn it over after that. Um, after a few questions, I'll turn it over to Councilmember Yeager who has a question, or any other council members that have some questions. But let me begin, Commissioner. I want to thank you for your testimony and for the work you've been doing. I, it's there's been a tremendous difference in the office. I, I agree with you that uh, it's it's a difficult situation, but you've made definite improvements. Um, one, of course, is the code of conduct, which I'm holding. Uh, it's quite extensive, much improved. Uh, but I have some questions on enforcement of it because um, I, I just want to go over let's, your, the staffing and operations in your office. How many employees are in your office currently? Because um, our, you know, just the, uh, you know, check, uh, there's 25 in the office for permitting. Um, is that correct? Um, there are seven, I, there's seven permit coordinators, um, five field representatives, and then administrative staff that supports that activity. How many, how many total, uh, employees? Um, well, so MOM overall has just under 90 headcount, but that's spread across the five divisions that I just described. So right. For, what about, I'm just office, talking about. I'm just talking about permitting. Yeah, uh, for permitting okay. specifically, we have seven permit coordinators. Okay. And there. Five okay. There lies the problem, 
because LA has 180 for permitting. LA is also a nonprofit. Um, their film activity is run by a nonprofit. It's not a government agency. Well, it doesn't matter. It's um, it's if well, they're if they're overseeing. And again, mm -hmm. this is um, there's other other cities that put many more employees on the ground. I'm I'm trying to get you more employees, uh, Commissioner. <laughs> I appreciate don't, don't that. Argue, don't argue. Don't argue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to get a bigger staff because obviously, and, and I just want to say this, my experience. And I know the pandemic got in between your work, and I, and I appreciate that. And I'm just not sure if you have enough employees to check on this, this code of conduct, because I believe that every film shoot, there should be someone overseeing it from your office. And, and I don't want them juggling 50 other shoots the same day, because it's not going to work. So, um, you know, they, if LA has enough for profit and it's working, I don't know if it's working. We'll do some more work uh, 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 work on that to to look at it. But we've been looking at other cities, and it looks like we have the smallest staff uh, out of any big city. So I'm I'm uh, I'm concerned that we should be expanding this office and uh, having a, a liaison because you even the you know the problem that we had in my district where there there was a mix up. There were two film shoots in at once. Um, and one was told to go into anything you can find, any commercial area you can find for meter parking. Um, and they went into my district. They were shooting in another district. And you know about that. Yes. I, because it was election day, there was nobody yes. to reach. But if, if I can address that for a moment, um, council member, uh, we, it was election day. Um, and but nevertheless, um, you were able to reach me directly and your office did reach out to my office directly. And, and I took your call. I was, I believe I was in Philadelphia at the time, tending to my uncle in hospice. Um, but nevertheless, we returned, um, we jumped on the situation immediately. I think, while well, yes, it was a mess and there are certainly things that we can do better to address, which I, I want to get to. Um, what I do want to point to is that my office was responsive immediately to yours. Um, the local precinct reached out reached out directly to Lieutenant Minor to assess the situation. And we were able to move the production out of that site by that afternoon. Um, where, we fit, where we fell down- yeah, but, but let me just jump in. Let me just jump in. That, uh -huh. The damage was done already. That's the problem. Right. You know, we're, but where we, and that's, that's why I want to address where we fell down, right? right? Okay. Where we fell down was when we saw that there was this, and, and to be clear, the, the what caused the problem was that when so there was production A and production B. When production B entered their information into the system, they selected the wrong borough. So it didn't immediately show up as a conflict, which had it done so, we would have certainly moved that production to a different neighborhood. Um, but as, as soon as we did discover it was a conflict, what we should have done was um, to reach out to you to flag the problem and see if we could troubleshoot it with you and uh, the neighboring district. And that is something that we would um, most certainly do moving forward. But even before that, um, you know, it, in this case, it was really ultimately a data entry error that triggered this problem. Um, but I would, I would, um, I would say that all of the pieces that we've been putting into place did allow us to be responsive immediately and to um, take the necessary steps to resolve the matter that day. I do recall that the council member had to jump for a, a vote, I think. And so um, I look to the council to see how you'd like to proceed. Councilmember Holden will be back with us in just in a moment. Uh, do you need me to jump in now to for the other council members that have questions? Council member Jonai, do you have a question to no. the commission? Can you call on the other council members that may have questions so we don't wait for uh, council member Holden? Hi. Um, council member Yeager has a question. Thank you. I, I actually have the same issue. I'm that sorry, I have. Thanks. You can turn off the clock because I don't care. Um, I have the same issue with the uh, as Chair Holden does. I have a noon vote, um, so I don't know if there are if Councilman Ulrich uh, has any questions, and I would defer to him if he wanted to, or Councilman Dinowitz. I see them here. 
Um, uh, but if not, I, I could start real quick. Um, Bob, are you still here? Okay. I think Councilor Beholden had to jump to the vote right now, but I do not see any other hands. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get into the other hearing and see if I could just monitor it. And then if I have to jump off, I'm going to jump off. Let me just start, start to peel through this. Um, first of all, uh, Commissioner, it's good to see you. And I apologize. I don't do the scheduling here. I, just, I seem to work for council staff. They tell me where to go and we show up. Um, uh, so that's just the way, unfortunately, it is. Um, I just I do want to state for the record um, uh, before I go into my questions and my comments that uh, when when we have had an issue in my community with film production and I've reached out to yourself or to uh, Commission 11, um, you've been incredibly helpful uh, in in uh, curtailing some of the abuses, uh, and not using hyperbole because they are abuses uh, that the that these film production companies heap upon my community as much as they heap upon any community in the city. For my community, it's a little bit uh, more salt on the wound um, for a number of reasons. Number one is, and maybe maybe this is the most important to my community, not most important to any other community. Um, my neighborhood uh, tends to not watch movies. They, many resident, most residents in my neighborhood don't go to movies, they don't watch movies, they don't see movies, they don't own TVs. They don't even have broadband access at home. This is not an industry that is providing something new and exciting to them. So what they're getting is the is the uh, uh, the, the 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 unfortunate uh, aftermath of the film industry, you know, coming into the neighborhood. And I'm not just referring to my district, but it's also Williamsburg uh, that has the same problems. And their council member is not here, but. I'm going to take the luxury and prerogative of speaking for a neighborhood that I know very well. Um, when you come into an Orthodox Jewish neighborhood, not you, and block off the streets and 48 hours in advance, put up a notice saying, get your cars out of the way. Uh, by the way, you know, we're putting up the notice on Thursday. We're going to do the filming on Saturday, but we can't move our cars on Saturday. So we have to get rid of them on Friday. Um, these are real problems. So I want to talk about the 48 hour notice for a minute because I, I'm clearly not going to change your mind that, you know, heard the exchange between yourself and uh, Councilman Jonai. But what I would say is that, first of all, the there are agencies that do provide us with more notice um, about about the uh, uh, planned work and things like that than 48 hours. But more more to the point, it is not an impossibility to provide more than 48 hours. It's not like, you know, you're giving us the 48 hours notice because that's the best you can do. We're getting the 48 hours notice because that's the, the that's the determination that was made. And with respect, I'm going to venture a guess as to why. If you gave us a week notice and it didn't work for us, we would have a week to start ringing bells and, and going crazy and doing the things we have to do and calling you. And if that doesn't work, calling a deputy mayor. And if that doesn't work, calling the mayor. With 48 hours notice, we have to literally drop everything and make this a project of the day. And there's a dice being rolled that council members don't have the time to do this in 48 hours to spend the entire 48 hours fighting with some film crew that wants to do this to our, their neighborhood. So therefore, it's going to happen. It's a balancing act of the desire to get the film done and at the same time get, you know, uh, uh, meddlesome council members like us to mind our business. Um, and in the feeling of some people, perhaps not yourself, Commissioner, uh, you know, it's not our business what's going on with these things because the film industry decides where they want to go and what they want to do. 48 hours is not enough and it can be more. And I have a suggestion easily how, first of all, I've seen the notices, as you know, because I've talked to you about this, uh, Commissioner and also Commissioner Levin, that the notices, I frequently find out about these because the notices went up before I even got the flash notice from your office. The flash notices are, are it's a broken system. The flash notices are not just addressed to myself, they're also being sent to my predecessor in the council who's been gone for four years. It's clear that the system could use an update and can use an upgrade. And I'm glad that the technology chair is here to hear this because this is something that we're going to, I think, uh, talk to do, do it about whether or not they can give you an assist to get a better system. But at the same time, it's still a human decision made 
to send those notices out. By the time I see the flash notice, the notices from the film crews have already gone up in the neighborhood. They've already seized the parking. They've already started causing the chaos in the community. What's an easy solution? The second they identify a location as a potential location, why can't we just get a flash notice that says this has been identified as a potential location? What would be so difficult and who would get harmed? That's question number one. Um, I think there are probably some notifications that we can consider for sure. I would need to, you know, I, and I'm not hedging. I really am a very process oriented person. I think you know this from our conversations. And so I never like to commit to something that might have unintended effects. So I really do like to understand like how that would play out. And, and listen, I, I'm, I'm very happy to um, engage in further discussion about how the notifications, the timing of the notifications, the types of notifications, um, to see if we can arrive at something that um, is, works um, for everyone, for sure. Um, and so I don't mean to suggest that there are these things written in stone. Um, I think there is, you know, there, it is absolutely worth um, revisiting processes. Um, and yes, looking at how uh, this information gets processed in um, the citywide events coordination and management database, um, how that information gets entered, how it gets transmitted, all of that. Um, and so, you know, if there's another layer of notification um, that we want to consider, I would love to have that, con I would love to pursue that um, um, exploration with you in your office. Okay. Time. So, uh, I would chair with your permission, if I may. Of course, continue. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, look, I, I, you know, I'm happy to explore it. Uh, 48 hours, you know, or 72 or 96 or a week or two or whatever the case may be, but 48 hours is not sufficient. What I will point out uh, to you, and, and you know this, but I want to say for the record as I started, um, you know, when, when I have seen this and I've reached out to you uh, and you've helped us um, uh, get to, you know, clearing up some of the mess, what I have found, and this is in every instance, not sometimes, not most of the time, but in every single instance, the film companies were taking up more than they needed. How do I know? Because they gave it up. The second they got a little pushback from you, they gave it up, which means that somewhere in the process, they're getting more than they need and nobody's pushing them back at the beginning. One of the reasons that I'm suggesting that it's not just the notice, but it's also a more proactive working with us uh, us who are elected and our community boards who are the eyes and ears on the ground. I mean, the reason I have a district manager in my district, uh, four of them, is because they're there every single day with their literally walking the streets of our neighborhood. They know what's going on. They'll see these signs. They flag it for us. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I have a far bigger district than any one of my district managers do. And so, you know, I, I rely on them to be my eyes and ears. Uh, and, when they are telling us that they're seeing this and then we start reaching out to you and you put us in contact with the film company and we start negotiating, the first reaction is there's no way we can do any less. When I let them know that in my neighborhood we have fleets of hundreds of privately owned school buses that belong to our community schools and I'm going to encircle the neighborhood with them and not let them in, they're immediately able to reduce the uh, the impact the of their... Of their uh, of whatever it is that they need. I apologize, that's the other hearing uh, coming on. So, you know, it's clear that they can reduce. It's clear that that they need the push to do it. What it's also, what's also clear is that I don't have the badge and the credentials to get them to do it without your help. So when we see a notice on Friday afternoon and we start reaching out to, to uh, your office and, you know, hopeful, yes, I, I, I could reach Commissioner 11, I could reach yourself offline. I'm not complaining that you're not responsive. That's not the case at all. But it shouldn't be the reliance on an enterprising council member to go out there and do the, We're legislators. This is not our job. And we're happy to do it, to be sure. But there ought to be a way that we're able to, before it even the impact even hits the community, to reduce the scope of what these film companies are asking for. They ask for dozens and dozens of blocks 
that they need parking. I promise you, by the way, they don't use any of our local stores in my community, not a single one. They bring in their own, I don't want them to, I don't care, but they bring in their own catering, they bring in their own this, they bring in their own, everything, they bring it in. They truck in everything. They, they don't even buy so much as a Diet Coke from the corner grocery store. They don't. And so the idea that this is somehow beneficial to my neighborhood as a neighborhood, as a, not, not separating it from as a part of New York City, but as a neighborhood, it's not beneficial. It's only damaging. So yes, we have to pay the price for being a part of this great metropolis of New York City, although I would very much ha happily uh, have Brooklyn be its own city and my neighborhood be its own village again. Uh, to reverse the great mistake of 1898. But until that time, we're stuck with this being dictated to us from Manhattan. And we really do need your help because I, I, I will respectfully, respectfully challenge one line that you said uh, earlier uh, with Councilman Jonai's questions. They do close off streets. They do. They not only close off streets, they block off parking in advance of when the permit is allowed for their filming. In anticipation that people won't move their cars, they start blocking it off a day or two in advance. That's not okay. These things are not okay. I agree. And, and there's no there's no enforcement of the code of conduct that we believe, you know, yes, they have a code of conduct. And then what? Who's the police on the code of conduct? I mean, in theory, your tiny agency is, but you're a tiny agency. You're not running around the city issuing fines, and if they and if they violate that code of conduct, what happens to them? Nothing. They don't get a penalty. I know, for example, that if Con Ed shuts down a street uh, in violation of its permit, I can call DOT. DOT will send out the high court team. They will get a significant fine for shutting down a street. Film companies, they get nothing. Nothing. It's nothing. They get. They. they nothing happens to them. Um, you know, I'm not going to belabor the points that I've made because it, it is in many ways repetitious of my colleagues. Um, and I may have gotten to the point where everything's been said, but just not everybody said it. So I don't want to do that. But I, what I will do is leave you with a closing thought. And you and I have talked about this, Commissioner and Commissioner Levin as well. Neighborhoods must be able, they must be able to control their own destiny. They must. It cannot be that the neighborhoods of this city have their their ability to thrive dictated to them from Manhattan. It can't be the case because we cannot survive that way. We are, it, it, there is no one size fits all rule to how New York City is run. And you know this because our neighborhood is so unique that you can literally lift up our community and put it in the middle of Kansas as a, as a wholly contained neighborhood and we won't even notice the absence of New York City. So, you know, we need your help to rein them in, and, and I do look forward to continuing to work with you, but I, I just want you to know that Councilman Joe and I is not alone on his feelings, and Councilman Holden's not alone on his feelings. I know there are other members um, who may or may not come into this hearing who we've been speaking about this since uh, we had a hearing when we were still at City Hall on this topic, I think two and two or three years ago, and it hasn't changed for the better. So uh, I'm very grateful, Chair, for, for the extra time. I appreciate it. Commissioner, uh, I really do look forward to continuing to work with you, but we have to do better. It's not, it's not okay the way things are going on. Thank you, Councilman Yeager. Uh, Thank you. And I just, want, I just want to, Commissioner, I just want to follow up on a few things that uh, Councilman Yeager said, um, um, cause, because the, the notification is the, it seems to be the issue and the oversight. I think those are the basic problems that we're seeing. And um, when you know how, how and when are communities notified of the upcoming film, other than the the posting of the flash, the notice, the flash notice, or the the sending a emailing of the flash no notice. According to MOM's code of conduct, production studios are required to notify the community board, city council, and the Block and Merchants Association for locations in which they are filming. Like you said, at least forty eight hours in advance. Um, but Here's the problem. Um, how does how do you check on if they're doing that? I mean, are you reaching out to all the parties? Uh, I know you have a small staff, but yeah. if we need more staff, then we need to you need to ask. Um, because I just got off the phone with the local merchants association president in Middle Village, where those shoots have occurred. He's never gotten a call from a film company in advance. I'll say that again. He's never gotten, and he's been president for a decade. He's never gotten a call. 
from any film shoot that was happening. And by the way, the one that was happening in Middle Village, remember before yes. Christmas, and that was before your time, I know, but he didn't get a call then. And the one that was just had that happened by mistake uh, in the area, he didn't get a call then. And another one that was happening on Metropolitan Avenue near Christ the King High School, again, that was last week or two weeks ago, they didn't post anything. I had a call to get the production company to post on the polls. Um, so it's not it's not fixed yet, Commissioner. No, um, I and and I would I'd be lying if I said that we had corrected all of the errors. Um, I do, as I've said, I do know there is more work to be done in terms of follow up. Um, you know, as you noted, we have a small staff, and so we do end up prioritizing. You know, based on, you know, where are big stunts happening, where are going to be some impact, some of the most impacted areas, and so on. A given day for follow up to make sure that people have dotted their eyes and crossed their T's. Um, in terms of in terms of outreach to communities, I'm not talking about following the code of con I'm not talking about the specifics of their permit, but in terms of doing outreach to communities, um, we we do our best to make sure that they have done the outreach that they're supposed to, but we're not able to get to every single production to make sure that they've done the outreach that they're and, supposed and to. See, but that that's the problem because um, I don't even think to me it looks like very few are being uh, there's no oversight. Or very little. Only when you get a complaint, because you said to me, "Well, as soon as I, we, you know, we got the, your complaint, you you moved all the vehicles." And it wasn't right away, by the way. And it, like I said, the damage was done. But just the fact, Commissioner, that that happened, that means you, they were told this production company was told just go to the next, uh, you know, uh, meter parking. That's got to change. I, I I told you oh, this already. Yes. Uh, let, let me just finish. Sure, just of course. Finish. That's got to change. But I think these, and, and again, this is not your fault because I know it's before your time, but they, they these, these um, film crews have gotten so used to no accountability at all, I mean, at all, that they just do as they please. So we're more often than not, we're seeing the abuses still. And we saw, I had two right in my, my district within weeks that were, no signs were posted, no, nothing was done. And, um, and, and just sending out an email and your code of conduct, you have a lot of rules here, a lot of rules. And maybe Josh Levin can answer this, but you know, are you checking if there's some big shoot, a big shoot, I'm not saying every shoot, there's a big shoot. Do you really do quality control that you check with the community board? Do you check with the Merchants Association? Maybe Josh, you wanna answer that? Josh Levin? Josh? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair Holden. Um, I would like to jump in, with... if Sorry. possible, because I don't think you've been sworn in. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Just... You want to go ahead and do it? Yes. I praise you. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Levin. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the only truth, and answer honestly to council member questions? I do. Thank you. You might answer questions. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you again, Chair Holden. Uh, so, directly reaching out to the 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 uh, the traders or the the bids, we we don't directly reach out with them every time. Um, we do when we try to get to the bottom of a situation. Um, I mean, we're having the productions post signage uh, in certain cases a week in advance. Um, it's it's a it's a work in progress. All sorry, right. Josh, so, so Josh. The question, though. Wait, wait, uh, sorry, just, I just um, wanted to clarify. For the big me. productions, we do do outreach with the um, with the communities when we know that like there's going to be big stunts or or a significantly large production, um, and we work with the studios to do that outreach. All right, but 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 here's the big buts. Do we, uh, like you said, a big production? Um, I just told you about the, the, the Middleville Chamber of Commerce never been notified. Um, it seems that we react after the fact. So what I'm saying to Josh, I'm saying to you, Commissioner, that wouldn't it be just put one person in charge to start calling and do it or, or send or email. If you can't, you don't have the personnel to call people and email survey 
-hmm. did and and with the checklist did this pro this production company do do these things that are on the code of conduct did they do it and that's all that's all i'm saying to you here because i don't want to keep beating a dead horse but there there's again there's this mindset i think in the industry that they could just like they own the streets they come in and it's theirs um i like i said when there's some shoots in my neighborhood contact my office not just through a flash because i get a flash and i sometimes i i can't react to it there's so much email that we get but if there's going to be a film shoot and i listen i'm the chair of technology which oversees this industry you know th this this office so if i'm not really getting the information what, what about, you know, community boards and council members and, uh, and merchants associations? So we need a quality control that, and if they're not adhering to it, what happens to these, like, like Councilman Yeager said, what happens to these, uh, these shoots, these, the, the, these uh, uh, film companies, what happens? Uh, I'd like to know how many were reprimanded in the past, how many were, their permits were pulled, how many um, how to pay a fine. Is, do you have those numbers, Commissioner? Uh, no, but it, we can we can work on that. Yeah, because I'd, I'd like to see. If there's if there are very few, then we have our work cut out for us. And um, like I said, um, I don't know if I'm going to be the chair of technology in the next council, and I don't know if you're going to be the, the commissioner, and I don't know if Josh is going to be there, but we have to prepare that we, we will be here, uh, or at least our communities will be here. Okay. And we, I want to leave the, this office in a better spot. And I'm still going to be a council member, so I can still participate. But um, I, uh, under the previous uh, administration, I, I saw that it's just like people were sleeping at the wheel. And, I, and the abuses are still happening. That's what I'm saying to you. And that we can minimize. And, and I have some ideas how we could, and I, and I spoke to you, Commissioner, uh, before the hearing. And I appreciate you coming out to my district because um, I've never had a, you know, a commissioner Moan come out to my district um, and you're the first one and you, you stayed and you answered questions. And I think we could, uh, and I hope you're the commissioner of, in the, you know, next year um, and that we can work together on specific improvements to, to kind of minimize the impact uh, to our, especially to our commercial districts uh, and, and to residential for parking. But what I'm saying to you and Josh is that we need the, we need that oversight from your office, and like a questionnaire. Have you done ever? Have you ever done a quality control questionnaire? Questionnaire, no, but direct follow up, yes. Okay, um, so direct follow up means that I, we don't have facts and figures on what percentage. So I think what should automatically happen going forward is that after a film shoot, an email goes out to the community, to the council members. To the community boards, to the merchants association, is that difficult? No. Could that be? Could you get a lot of information? Yes. So that's what I think might you might start, um, because if I bet if I ask community boards, they only got the flash from your office, right? They got no calls, and we found this out the last time. No calls from the film industry, no calls to the merchants association. I just got off the phone, like I said. He's my the Merchants Association president never got a call. So there you go. They're violating the code of conduct. And that's an important feature, Commissioner. So I, uh, I don't, again, I don't want to, um, you know, I, nobody's checking if the notices are going up. Um, so, like I said, they're very difficult to enforce. So um, I'd like to get how many, like, uh, like I said before, how many violations were issued to anybody, any film shoot. That for taking up too much spots, you know, taking over. And by the way, the normal occurrence, and I'll ask this to the NYPD, because um, I got an answer from, apparently from your office, um, the, N the NYPD, because uh, I called my, um, the CEO of my local precinct, um, Deputy Inspector Hall, I said about the, um, the Metropolitan uh, shoot, the Metropolitan Avenue shoot on November 2nd, election day. I said, there's no permits posted. Can you go and summons them? Because there, there's no posted, there's nothing posted. There was no production person that could answer any of my questions, no locations person that could answer my question. They were rude. 
uh, the, the, the production company was rude to my businesses. And they just like did it, did that, did as they pleased. They used us as a parking lot, and I resented that. And I told the commissioner this that it was, and I understand there's a mistake it was made. Well, there's no excuse for rudeness, but more importantly, there was a lack of communications. Um, but when I asked the precinct commander to, to issue parking summonses. Um, I got a roadblock from NYPD saying that the film industry company that was shooting, I think it was NBC, um, they had permits for the following day. And that's what the deputy inspector of the precinct told me, which was untrue. You, you, can you guys explain that in NYPD, what happened there? Not to ask you from the NYPD legal bureau. Right. I'll probably be sworn in. Oh, you didn't, okay, you weren't sworn in? All right, go ahead, Irene. You're on mute, Irene, you're on mute. I apologize, yes, thank you very much. I did not realize I was on mute. Uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth and answer honestly to council members' questions? I do. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Holden. Uh, I don't have any direct information about that. We can follow up with, um, Inspector Hall, um, I'd certainly um, try to get your answer on that. Uh, Tim, do you know anything about this incident? Um, yes, but in regards to some, let me just first and start. say good afternoon, Chair uh, Hall and Chair Joe and I, the rest of um, both members of both community councils, uh, committees, excuse me. Um, when it comes to summonses, parking summonses, um, first of all, let me, let me start. Um, my unit was staffed with uh, three sergeant salon police officers, and we have. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How many officers are, are in your unit? I couldn't hear that. 14, 14 police officers. Sorry. 14? 14. And we cover the city, right? Um, out of all the permits that are issued, exterior permits that are issued, we cover less than a fifth of them, like about about 20% or so. So we cover. Um, Sets that have that have police uniforms or any uniforms, stunts, weapons, driving shots. If they're using vehicles with cameras on them, um, if they're holding traffic or pedestrian traffic temporarily, we're on those. Um, we're on those sets, and when we're on those sets, I tell my my police officers don't look at the code of conduct, and my police officers inspect the sets themselves. If they see uh, a double park car. If they see a truck parked in a no standing zone, or a bus stop, they'll speak to the location manager or the, or the assistant director and then rectify the situation. It doesn't normally lead to a summons because they're, they're pretty good rapport with them and they do what we say. However, when we're not there, that could be, you know, that could be maybe an issue. So, um, but your office doesn't approve permits other than if they're shooting weapons or something, right? We don't know, sir. We don't. We don't approve permits at all. The most that we do, I'll go out with one of my supervisors and we'll help scout locations to see how feasible they are in that area, to see how safe they would be and the impact of that community. You know, and that's pretty much it. That's the. So extent. is that is that automatic uh, on every shoot or just uh, some larger ones that you do that? It depends. We, I, uh, we, um, the mayor's office of filming the media and I, we uh, collaborate very regularly. So if we feel it needs to get scouted physically, I will go out there or I'll send a member of my staff to go out there to speak to the location manager to see exactly what they want to do and, and to try to control them to not um, have a negative impact on that community. All right, so you, did you get notification? Did you get the flash notice of all the shoots around the city of New York, your office? Only when we requested. Only when we're on them to cover them. Not all of them, no. So you don't get them all, but you get if if uh, they request NYPD presence. Yes, sir. And why would they request NYPD presence? Again, if they have uniforms on the set, any uniform, police uniform, fire uniform, EMS uniform, um, they have weapons, any weapon, a firearm, uh, a sword, a knife, a bat. Um, if they're doing some sort of stunts, they have a bicycle popping wheelie in the street, we'll be there for that. If they have to hold traffic temporarily, we'll be there for that. 
that they have to put whole pedestrians somewhere who would be there for that. And we work in collaboration also with traffic agents and productions hire, hire their own flaggers. So there's different levels of oversight with that. But my guys, we look at the permit um, and we enforce the permit. You know, we have a copy of the permit of the day and we see exactly what they're doing. And if they overstep what they have on the permit, my, my, my officer is there to correct them. So and are you, are you, yeah, but are you consulted before the permit is approved or do you just uh, do it after the fact, like you're notified and then you have to get involved? I'm, I'm normal, I normally, I'm in all pre-production meetings with the mayor's office, especially the big shoots, you know, if there's like a big movie coming in or if there's something that's very stunt heavy or like a police show, there's a lot of weapons involved, I'm consulted with that. And then, um, you know, leading up to that day, like I said, we scout, I speak to the mayor's office every single day, uh, either, you know, either to the film commissioner or to um, her um, deputy commissioner, uh, Lizanne Acosta. And we discuss whether we cover something, we don't cover something, if it needs to get scouted, and we take it from there. Because we know what happened with the fire that time um, and the loss of a, a, a firefighter. Um, yeah. So if something, so since that, since that uh, incident, uh, I guess it was a few years ago, um, uh, have you gotten it, has your office increased, um, the, the, you have only 14 members, you said, have you gotten an increase at all? No, unfortunately not, no. Okay, so 14 to do the whole city just doesn't seem like you can cover any, much at all, but um, do you feel that, um, and, and I know I, to ask a police officer or, or a chief or, or anybody this question, I know I'm probably not going to get an answer, but um, do you feel overwhelmed in your office many times trying to cover all these shoots? Look, I, I mean, I have a very good relationship with the mayor's office and I'm the liaison with the police department and the mayor's office and other city agencies. So I collaborate normally with precincts as well. So if there's something I can't cover, or there's something I need additional coverage for, I'll reach out to the operations commander of that precinct or the captain or inspector asking for additional police presence on that film shoot. If it's a troubling area, if right. they need it, you know, if they have explosives and stuff. Yeah, like but that. It's, just, it's just a because um, this happens and it happens sometimes very, very often that the film company, like Councilmember Yeager said earlier, that they'll take over the area the day before. And I was given an explanation by some of the film companies why they do it. That means they'll if they're shooting, let's say on a Friday, they'll come in um, Thursday. And even during the day, and they'll start putting their cones out and taking over the, the, the area. And that was looked, I don't know if it's still done, Commissioner, if you, if you know about that, but they'll, they'll take over the area way before their permits sometimes, many hours before or even a day before. And um, have, you, have you given summonses, uh, uh, your unit, for that violation, or do you rely on local precincts to do it? Uh, no, sir, we don't. Like okay. I said, on the day of filming, if we see a violation, we correct it on the scene. And if for some reason it doesn't correct, then we'll issue a summons. So that's last resort. Okay. So yeah, no. yeah it, so it sounds like we need it. Your your office needs to be larger too. Um, but uh, I, I and I know you wouldn't object to it, but uh, uh, it's still, you know, what we're seeing is it's almost like the, the industry can just. Um, do as they please because you know again they are a big tax base they are obviously you know um, have a, a a lot of uh, influence and they're they have a lot of employment obviously but um there are a lot of abuses to this so um uh i i thank you for, you know the nypd but i'd like you to investigate because we were lied to by the way um from somebody in nypd when they told deputy inspector hall that that November 2nd film shoot had a permit for the next day. That like somebody made something up because it wasn't true. It was, uh, and again, trying to get information that day was difficult because I kept getting people saying they had a permit, they didn't have a permit, um, but these things are happening. If there's a mix up, that's when you need, everyone needs to contact the community board, the, the council member and um, the merchants association, especially when there's a mix up. That's why. <laughs> Um, Sorry. You know, so Commissioner, your office, um, you know, like you, let's say there's a Saturday night film shoot and 
there's a problem. Is somebody working 24 seven from your office? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to give it to Josh, but if, uh, you know, somebody gets a call, I, I, you know, I'm not going to reach out to the commissioner all the time. You may not be available. Uh, and Josh maybe has his phone on 24 seven, but you know, if there's a problem um, is, you know, and that's where yes. I want to get to. I, I know, I think I know the answer to this, but if there's a problem on a two in the morning, uh, then is, cause you're, you're permitting them to shoot at two in the morning. Is somebody going to cover that from your office? Yes. And I do have my phone on 24 seven. And no, if I'm not I saying don't... you, you're, you're one person. I'm just saying. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is uh, there is always a point of contact at my office available in the event of a situation arising off hours. All right. It because... may take a little bit longer, but there's yeah, not, I'm... there's not. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm just saying, but here's the thing. I, Cause I, there was a, like I said, a film shoot in my, in my neighborhood and uh, when, when it was, one of my staff did call that number that was posted, uh, the voicemail, like I mentioned in my opening rem remarks, the, the voicemail was full and nobody picked up. Um, so those numbers that are posted many times, and that's the film industry, by the way, uh, yes. but there should be, is there, is there a number to your office uh, posted on those, uh, those notices? No, and it is because to have an immediate response, we do want the productions to deal with it when they're contacted. And, you know, when we discover that there are problems with the numbers, we immediately tell the production that they have to update the number with a number that someone will respond to immediately. All right. Uh -huh. um, That's a problem. Yes. Because, you know, the, the fox is watching the hen house. Okay. You can't, we can't have that. There's got to be, and I'm suggesting this, and if, if you, if it requires legislation, I'll do it. And I know, uh, uh, Councilman Yeager will co-sponsor it, but we should have your number posted on these, your emergency number mm -hmm. that, that's posted on these notices um, and probably possibly NYPD because this, these, these are happening in real time. There's I mean, abuses and we don't, we don't yep. want to, we want to make it easier certainly, for the general public. Certainly in cases of life-threatening situations, we, it, that, it, you know, we will be notified, like police is, are the people that will be called. And if it involves film, we will be notified. So I'm not talking um, about only, I'm not talking but, about life threatening. I'm yeah. talking about a definite negative impact on the community. And it could be thousands of reasons why okay. we need that. And okay. if we're leaving it up to the industry to police themselves, then we don't need your office. All right. We don't need a film. We don't need a the NYPD film guys either. We don't need those units if there's if it's going to be that the industry is policing themselves. And commissioner, you know, with all due respect, we're kind of seeing that. You know, we're, we're, Sir, we're if and I it's may, not, again, it's not your office. No, no, but I but I do want to calibrate a little bit, right? Because our office issues close to ten thousand permits a year. Um, and on balance, the number of issues that we have don't don't come close to that. Um, we are able to resolve the majority of issues. And I'm not saying that to diminish the issues that your communities are are experiencing at all. But I do want to um, state for the record that we have been managing production um, fairly successfully. There's always room for improvement. And one of the things that I started to say, and I think you were called off by the time I I um, was able to explain that in this particular instance on the on election day, um, one of the things that one of the places where my office did fail, and I said this to you when we met, is that as soon as we identified that there was a conflict that impacted your um, district, we should have reached out to you, and we did not. And that is definitely on us, and that is something that we will correct moving forward. Um, you know, it was a data entry error, and there were a number of like series of unfortunate events, but as soon as we identified that there was a conflict that we needed to fix, we absolutely should have reached out to your office. And I think, you know, you will you will see that moving forward. Um, I think you've seen it in other instances. This was, to my mind, an anomaly in this particular case. Um, but I, I know we can do better and we continue to look for ways to do do so. All right, just, just one other question. I'm gonna throw it over to Chair Joan I. Um, I'll ask the, I can ask the NYPD this also. Uh, it's illegal to drive those 53-foot trailers, those long trucks in New York City. 
um, or some, you, know, you have to get a special permit. Um, do the production companies uh, have these permits? And have you ever issued a violation for the 53 foot long trucks? Sometimes these things are 75 feet long uh, that are coming into our neighborhoods and parking on our streets and turning on, on our tight streets. Have there been issues, has there been violations issued or and have, are there permits issued for the oversized vehicles? No, sir, but going forward, I'll start looking into it. So you don't know that you're, you're in the film, you're in the film unit. So go ahead, Josh, you have, you have an answer to that? Yes, I do. Uh, sorry for stepping in, uh, Lieutenant Minor, and thank you, Chair Holden. Uh, so that's a DOT overdimensional permit. That's another part of the process of applying for a permit. So production, if they're going to bring in the large trucks, uh, 53 feet or more, they have to apply for an overdimensional permit. Can I see the, can I see the, um, the permits for the last shoot in Forest Hills and that, that affected my area? We will get you that information, sir. Okay. Um, but that should, that doesn't go to NYPD for enforcement? No, we don't. If it's on the permit. If it's it on the permit. On permit. Yeah. And again, okay. that, it, it might not have been on the permit for your district because that was inherently the problem with that situation is that there wasn't. Well, they should have had a foot. No, they should have had the permit for the 53 footers in Forest Hills. Yes. It, well, except, oh, in, in Forest Hills. I see what you're saying. Okay. Did they have that permit? Uh, we'll have to pull it. I don't have that available. But if they if they had overdimensional vehicles, um, then the, they would have had to have secured a permit from DOT, which would have been reflected on our film permit. All right, we're gonna we're gonna have next time I'll have DOT on this because I don't think, I, and again I'm gonna guess, and I don't like to guess because I, nobody can tell me how many violations were issued for 53 footers that didn't get the permit. Um, and by the way, when I did speak to uh, Commissioner um, Bratton a few years ago, they weren't issuing not many issues to 53 foot trailers in the city of New York. Everybody, everyone was looking the other way. Commissioner Gutman, to his credit, the DOT said he's going to make it a priority. So I want to, I'll talk to Commissioner Gutman to see if these, these film companies are getting the permits. And it should be a cost to them, by the way, because they're very wealthy. And they do have a, these oversized vehicles have a tremendous impact on our streets in the city of New York. They're larger, they're dangerous because the turn radius is much wider and it's a big issue. And, um, and I hope to make it a, a bigger issue in the, in the next council. But uh, uh, Chair Jonah, do you have a question? I do, thank you, Bob. Um, and thank you, Commissioner, for uh, staying on this long to answer our questions. In trying to be proactive, why aren't we requiring these productions to actually notify you that they completed the 48 hour notice to the community board, the council member uh, and the merchants? Uh, I think that's something that we talked about. I mean, the, the notification, yeah. I mean, it's something that we can, we can, um, we can look into moving forward. We haven't, you know, we require them in the code of conduct. They're supposed to adhere to the code of conduct. Um, we hadn't um, contemplated the proposal that um, Chair Holden suggested that we have a checklist that they they um, that they fill out, uh, or even frankly a survey. And so there's there's multiple ways that we can consider doing follow up. Um, again. I don't want to commit to anything here because I need to understand how we would implement um, such a, a process. But I, I do believe there probably is a way that we can um, uh, make sure that they're doing the outreach that they're required to do under the code of conduct. And, and that outreach would be by notifying you, obviously, and your department that they have done this. That's what I mean. There, would... there, there's probably some ways that we can look into ensuring that. Okay, that's one. And two, Commissioner, are you aware of any other city that can give more than 48 hour notice, that does give more than 48 hour notice? I believe Chair Holden uh, mentioned four days notice. Uh, some of the other jurisdictions do have that ability, but again, they are um, different in composition and makeup. Um, you know, some of the jurisdictions that we uh, uh, confer with 
have downtowns that shut down after hours. They're not vibrant in the way that New York cities are. And so it's, you know, they can have a certain level of predictability that, that is different. No, but Commissioner, the question is, are you aware of any other municipality that gives more than 48 hour notice uh, to the community, businesses, residents? Offhand, I could not name any, um, but we can certainly circle back to your office with that. So I think the chair, Chair Holden, um, you don't have to circle back to me. Chair Holden mentioned that there is a city that gives four yeah, days. Boston and LA, but the, the, the cities that we check, nobody gives a, a two day notice. Uh, that there's always longer than two days. So I'm not aware of any city that does longer, uh, that does shorter permits. Atlanta, so LA, Atlanta has four days, right? And some other LA, three days. So these are major cities. The point being is their the, the dynamics are similar to New York City. And if they can do it, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to do it. And then the question, Commissioner, would be, 48 hours notice, is that business hours or is that just 48 hours in advance notice? Um, I think it's 48 hours. Uh, so, just so just imagine this commissioner, Friday after five, a production sends out notice that 48, 48 hours later, there'll be production when that business is closed, and in Kalman Yeager's, uh, Council Member Yeager's instance, where his community, uh, for religious purposes, they're not around. They wouldn't even know. And they wake up to a surprise, or to find Council out that Member, they're caught. Yeah. Chair, I, I think you might have been off the call when we, when we discussed um, that we would look into other types of notifications. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not, um, I'm not closed to the idea of exploring other ways that we can be notifying communities. And so, you know, we're happy to follow up about that. Well, well that was the pushback. That but I am I going to say that 48 hours is enough or not enough? Again, as someone who uh, really thinks through the process and unintended consequences of how these things get administered, I would, I would want to have a more thorough discussion about that rather than commit to anything at this time. Commissioner, that's what I was trying to do earlier, but to be quite frankly, we're kind of defensive on it, that 48 hours, you made the point to say that's more than enough notice that other agencies give similar notices. You defended it. And I'm sitting here saying, hey, this is not the case. Uh, we have real impacts here. That 48 hours may not be enough. And what can we do to give more notice? I'm not asking to reinvent the wheel, but what can we do? That was the idea. And in hearing some of the questions in the back and forth, I just can't imagine why we're not going to ask the production companies to notify you 48 hours in advance that they've already done the outreach to confirm. Now what we can do, maybe a spot check, and then we know who the bad actors are, and no pun intended. And I'm not here to crucify or vilify the film industry. We're trying to come up with a relationship and a partnership that works. That's the intent. But if you're telling me there's 48 hours is more than enough notice, I beg to differ. I didn't say that, sir. I oh. said that is that is this practice right now and that is how the, the system is set up. But I also said that I would be willing to explore other methods of notification and other times range of notification. Thank so just to clarify my earlier statements. For the purpose of this hearing, then I think 48 hours business hours would be equipped would be fair, not after hours. So we yeah, can. I'm not going to commit to anything in this hearing. I'm happy to explore what could work, what alternatives might work. For the purpose of discussion and looking into it, I'd like to reflect on 48 hours of business. I'm not asking you to commit. I'm asking you that we can actually come back with something sound. Um, and I, I guess the last portion of my follow-up to to this is are you have you ever been aware of a street closure that happened for a movie production yes earlier we don't said, permit that alone we do not permit that alone we do that in conjunction with pd and the citywide events coordination and management we do not shut down streets on our own through a film permit okay um 
And who can answer the question then when there's a street permit closure, what is the application process for that? Uh, I am not at liberty to answer that on my own. I would need my colleagues from Citywide Events Coordination and Management or DOT or NYPD um, to assist with a response to that question. I think NYPD is on with us. Aside from NYPD, I'm not sure if the DOT is on or that can answer this question. Hey, Chair Joe and I, I think I can um, answer the question. Thank you for that. Um, like I said before, we scout most locations that are exterior that affect traffic and pedestrians. So there are times, and you're absolutely right, we do shut down traffic temporarily on that block. It could be seconds, it could be minutes, but it could be a couple hours. It depends on what they do. So yes, you're absolutely right. It is a little negative on the community, but we try to perform those traffic controls um, not within rush hour times, okay? So they could, depending where it is, it could be from like maybe 10 in the morning to two in the afternoon, three in the afternoon, they can have holds of city blocks. And again, city blocks, excuse me, not blocks at the same time. And we're there to supervise that. Okay, and these holes can be very intimate. It could be uh, a few seconds after a red light. It could be maybe um, closing the block temporarily or move a truck in or put a, you know, or actors are in the street or there's some sort of explosion or like you said before, a rain tower on Wall Street. We'd probably lock it up for a few minutes for that scene to take place. And once they are done filming that scene, we open up traffic again. But my guys are there to see if there's any sort of negative impact in regards to traffic. If we see a backlog of cars down the block, if we see uh, pedestrians piled up at the end of the street, we open up traffic. When we're there, we, we're definitely on top of that and we'll make sure that we're not, we try not to hinder the public too much with this. Again, they have to still film, but we try to balance both the community right, and so the Sorry, Lieutenant, that, that was not the, and sorry, Chair, that was not what I understood the question to be. I understood the question to be whether our permits allow um, a production to shoot down, to shut down a street entirely. Um, the scenario that the Lieutenant just described is permitted activity under a film permit, but to shut down an actual roadway, our film permits do not allow for that. In the instances when we have done that, um, it has been in partnership with citywide events coordination and management for an event, for example, like last year when we permitted the Thanksgiving Day Parade as a media event, we shut down 34th Street to traffic uh, that was not under our permit that was in con conjunction with NYPD and citywide events coordination and management. But a film permit alone cannot shut down an entire um, street to traffic for an extended period of time. Um, there may be intermittent traffic um, stoppages, but the flow of traffic is allowed to continue for the duration of the shoot. Thank you, Commissioner. So then it's the NYPD that would coordinate a road closure for whatever period of time. And by the way, a few months ago, it was not minutes. It was hours and hours. They actually brought a crane in. They shut down the street. And I had witnessed it when I went in for dinner. When it came out, that street was still shut down. So is it NYPD that coordinates the permit process? I would have to look at the, again, I do actually have to look at the specific circumstances of that permit because depending on the activity that's happening, it could be multiple agencies that require the coordination to shut down the street. So NYPD is one of them. DOT, and maybe NYPD. PM, FDNY, DOB. Those were all of the entities that we worked with, for example, on the Thanksgiving Day Parade and on New Year's Eve. Okay, but let's let's ask the NYPD since they're present. NYPD coordinates a street closure at times. It's yeah. not this unit that would do it. This unit is specifically for the movie TV unit. They do not, and you can correct me, Lieutenant, but uh, it's NYPD operations that would shut down a street. Did the lieutenant answer? No, that, that's right. That's my understanding. That, like I said, we'll temporarily hold traffic. We'll temporarily close the street temporarily for traffic or pedestrians if there's a safety concern. Like I said, there's actors in the street. They're doing a car sequence. They have rain towers. They're doing an explosion. 
if they're shooting firearms and the loud noise might bother somebody, they'll we'll, we'll shut you know we'll, we'll we'll shut traffic down temporarily for that scene to take place. We don't want to, to cause a traffic accident or anyone to be alarmed or anything like that. So yes, temporary holds we definitely do. But prolonged with prolonged street closures, giving full accessibility to the film production, we do not do. Okay. But based on that explanation uh, of actors being in the street shooting a scene, which I imagine can last from minutes to hours, right? Is that coordinated with you directly? And how soon before the um, coordination is this discussed with you? It's with myself and the mayor's office, you know, and, and like, but follow what the commissioner said, it, it, it depends. It depends if it's a movie, it depends if it's a film, it could be it could be a couple of weeks, it could be a couple of months, it could be a few days. But depending where it is, and depending what they're doing, um, you know, like I said, we'll get involved. So your involvement on the in those shoots that require temporary street closure, it's done way in advance of the shoot. It, it, Timing depends, but yes, sir. Yes, we have a pre-production meeting. We'll discuss it. But again, the kinks will get worked out and supplied days before the shoot. These productions keep evolving what they want to do sometimes. And, you know, they come, keep coming back to myself, the mayor's office, and we have to kind of adapt to that and say, no, you can't do that. You can't have the street, you know. You can't, you can't shut down Fifth Avenue in the middle of the day from 2 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You know, so we... we like I said, we take a we try to take a reasonable common sense approach to have what they do not negatively interfere with traffic and pedestrian conditions in that area. And like I said, for example, rush hour times, you know, they might shut down. A, you know, we might extend a street closure for longer than a few minutes, maybe an hour or two, on an overnight. You know, uh, especially if, if, if the area is like an industrial area, it's desolate. There aren't, there aren't many cars. There aren't many people going down that block. We're able to, you know, direct them somewhere else. There's other access points for them to get around. You know, yes, for their safety, we would do that. My point being is that if, and I'm sure there has to be a coordinated effort if there's going to be a temporary street closure, whether it be through NYPD or DOT uh, for that permit, those are the those are the productions that have the most impact on residents and businesses. And my point is that we should be giving them as much advance notice as possible. They, I, I, that's all I have to say on this. I want to thank you all for answering the questions and thank you, Chair Holden. Thank you, Chair John I, for the questions. And um, I just have a few more, Commissioner. And um, you know, you, you are aware that there is no official designation or category for 301 complaints related to the film and television industry, right? You, on 311? We do get complaints directed to us from 311, but I don't know how those get classified. We, we just keep track of what comes, you know, right. we, uh, they, do, they, they do it based on what's directed to yeah. us. Because my committee oversees 311 um, and we're trying to improve 311. We're trying to improve the app to have a category so would you support the creation of an official category for com 311 complaints related to the film and television industry? If it was on the app, let's say, or at least on a designation of the website. Uh, I, 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 I don't see, if it would help, if it would help to resolve complaints, absolutely. Yeah, it's this way your office would get the information, uh, you know, on a timely basis as to what are some of the complaints. So can you, do you have a number of how many complaints you received, let's say from 301 in, in 2020? I, Josh, I think you have something, uh, you have a follow-up um, to that? In, in 2019, we had 920, uh, which was 0.03% of the total complaints for that year. In 2020, we had significantly less because there was no real film activity right. until September. Right. Right. Um, and to date, we've had um, in 2021, we've had about 320, which is 0.01% of the overall um, complaints received through 311. 
you know, but again, that's um, because it's not easy to make a complaint. Uh, uh, for instance, try to do it on the app. You can't do it. Uh, it's impossible. Uh, try to do it on the website. You know, so we're not we're not making it easy. That's what I'm saying to you, Commissioner. That these numbers would probably quadruple if I think we had more access to making these complaints, especially when you you have a phone number on your permits that only go to the film company, you know? So if you had a complaint on the on the um, the posting on the on the polls, you know, that had your number or 311 number or somebody else that we could gain, you know, get get a complaint through, you probably get a lot more. Just just my observation. Um, but I, you know, I'd like I'd like those numbers um, because um, I you know I'd like to track this how many um, complaints there were and and the categories of the complaints because I'd like to know is it about more about parking is it noise is it block you know blocking the businesses are the complaints coming from small businesses residents you know the breakdown if we can get that since again since my office um, can can find it by the way my technology committee staff couldn't get the information on the open data because it wasn't a film category is, uh, am i correct on that committee council there's there there is open data uh we do have permits on open data so i'm not sure we're no, the, 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 the complaints the, the, the nature of the complaints we couldn't get am i correct uh, uh irene that, that's correct, Council Member Holden. We we can't see the number of permits issued, but we do not see the complaints regarding film shootings. But that needs to be on open data, so that we can again we have to provide oversight. My committee staff could not get that information. And that's why I'm asking you, and we we have to correct that on open data, because we can't provide proper oversight of uh, of an agency without seeing that. I think you would agree. Yes or no? Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, like, what? Can you can can you uh, just a, a couple more questions? Can, what is considered a hot spot? Uh, you know. Uh, so, so, so we we look at um, a variety of factors. Uh, it it's um, the level of activity that's been happening in that area, not just production, but also public works, street activities, um, construction. Um, you know, during the pandemic, we also looked at um, some of the areas that were hardest hit by the pandemic. Um, and, you know, or if, if they were like during the pandemic, especially during around hospitals, like we um, really put limitations on, uh, we restricted some of those areas to filming um, at that time. Uh, so we, we look at that level of, of activity. Um, and if, uh, and we'll, and that's how we make those determinations about uh, so is there is there a number of uh, limit of how many shoots on a particular block or area uh i at one time heard five that we, you're not going to do more than five in one particular block or area we don't admittedly we don't look at it that specifically because it can be in a particular neighborhood, but not in the same block. So know. You know, we but do try I, to be. Go ahead. All right, but you can see. Um, you know, how do you like request a hotspot or a moratorium to, in, to your office? So is that only through the council members, or is it like the community boards? Uh, because I, I don't. I don't think that a small business should be able to tolerate. Um, I mean, it, 10, it's, 15 it's, shoots on their right. blocks a, a year, right. right? Do you? I, I mean, I, I will say it, it again speaks to a balance because I, I can assure you that for every business that doesn't want filming, there is another one that wants it sometimes in the same areas. Well, I'd like um, to meet that, I'd like to meet that business, by the way, because my district. Yeah, well, the, you know, <laughs> there, there, there are, um, there are businesses that view it as an opportunity for promotion. Um, you know, I, there's quite a number of New York City businesses that are frequented because they've been seen in a film and whatnot. And so they love the attention. They view it as promotion or they view it as additional income. You know, if if it's a 
if it's a an event space and you know they're able to rent out their space for holding um they can make a significant amount of money through location fees and well, so yeah, i know, I know that's, that that's the balance i get that's that i get that because uh on that film shoot in uh in forest hills industry called me said you know we paid that homeowner twenty four thousand dollars to use his or her house mm -hmm. uh but i feel but if it's going to impact the commercial district which they park their vehicles there so they film you know they could film a half a mile away in a residential area give that homeowner 24 grand and yet it costs maybe the businesses more than that while they're taking up the, the spaces collectively in that commercial district and that is the problem again this is why i uh, you know yes there are some businesses that get paid personally because they're using their i'm not going to talk about that because that's like that that's a business agreed to that but the impact on the other businesses uh, has to be measured, which I don't think is being done by by the mayor's office or anybody in the city. Um, and I think that's what uh, Councilman uh, Joe and I was saying, that we need a little bit more sensitivity. Um, so yeah, just a couple more questions. Like I said, in 2019, in the 2019 hearing, Commissioner, you said you were collecting information on how many or how much it actually costs to um, you know, adjudicate a permit. Um, do you, oh yes. So yeah, do you we, do an analysis had, on that? Yeah. We we had intended to um, introduce new rules for permit fees before the pandemic hit, um, and then unfortunately had to shift resources to focus on the recovery and setting up this new press credentialing unit. Um, but as well as be sensitive to you know the fact that the industry had been shut down for all intents and purposes for almost a year. It really didn't make a comeback until last fall. And so, you know, weighing those factors, um, it, not just those factors, but the fact that we also have limited resources at the moment to introduce new um, rules, we, we did table that. However, we will be looking at that um, in the next uh, year. Okay. All right. Just one more question. This is it. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, but how many hotspots are there currently in New York City? Oh, um, it, we can send that to you. I don't. I. I. You know. I don't. We don't do it by number. Or we sort of um, have it. Um, uh, we. We can. We can. I'll have to follow up with that. I don't have it off the top of my head. Yeah, but because. Um, I'd like to know. This is these are important questions. I think we got that to, to provide more oversight, and, uh, um, and so I think we need to do that and get get that information. But uh, um, Councilman Yeager, we're about to have more because of the the holiday. Actually, we're we're right. about to uh, introduce a few more because holiday season is getting underway this week. So I just want to ask any other council members have questions. Uh, no, okay. Uh, so. I guess uh, thank you, Commissioner, and uh, thank you, Josh. Thank you, NYPD, for your uh, for your work, and um, we'll see you at the next hearing. Hopefully sooner than that. We'll try, we'll try to make it a few, uh, you know, a couple more months before you. But uh, we thank you, Commissioner. I know it's a, it's a difficult job when you have a very small office, and um, in a new in new council, I know that uh, we should try to get more resources for your uh, agency, certainly in your office, because. Uh, Again, I want to thank you. You've been very cooperative, and uh, you, the fact that you came out to my office, I appreciate that, and it shows that you do care. And Josh, thanks again, and um, we'll work together, and uh, hopefully have a good uh, uh, next year, and have a good Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you so much, and I hope you. Uh, we have only a few um, um, people that are going to testify uh, from the community, so if you could stay on, Commissioner, not too long, I promise. Um, and listen to their some of their complaints. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. I, I may have to jump, but my my team will stay on. Too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Back to committee thank council. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Holden, and thank you, Chair Jonai, and Commissioner and Lieutenant Miner. We will now turn to public testimony. I will be calling names. So once your name is called to testify, our staff will unmute, and the surgeon at arms will set the timer to accommodate everyone who registers so that you can begin your testimony. Council members will have an opportunity to ask questions 
And now I would like to welcome our first panelist to testify. And our first panelist is Mr. Anthony, Anthony Miziato. Time yes. starts now. Thank you. I'd like to thank Councilman Robert Holden and also I believe Councilman Jonai and everybody else who's uh, having these hearings. As a small businessman, it's so important uh, that you uh, attack this uh, vigorously because as a businessman, we don't get a check. We're not guaranteed a check. You know, we depend on the street. We spend tens of thousands of dollars on our business signs. We clean the streets 365 days a year. Everything that blocks us, that means that we lose business for the day, two days or three days. As a councilman, Joan, I am sorry, I didn't get your title. Is it, is it uh, uh, Councilman Holden? Yes, that's a councilman, Joan. I. Yes, you pronounced it right. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you. I just want to give him the correct uh, respect he deserves. Councilman Joan, I, excellent. You're hundred percent right. We get days notice, two days notice. Councilman Holden, you are totally on top. We bring, we thank you for bringing us to attention. Uh, we're being, um, we take care of the streets. We get the penalties for dirty streets. We get the penalties for no parking. Yet they come along at any time without notice, put tractor trailers in front of my store, take up more space than is allotted, that is needed. You have eight blocks that are blocked off and two will be used. I, I gather no business. And I would like to challenge the fact, I would like to see what business, give me the numbers you're saying it's an $8 billion industry for New York. I want to see how much we're losing with the small businesses. Does anybody have those numbers? Because I know the small business along Grand Avenue and Massmouth and Middle Village, we're losing. We don't get compensated. We don't get notice ahead of time. A lot of times, like uh, Councilman Robert Holden said, some of them are quite nasty. And I sometimes I had to deal with them by calling the police because they refused. They put cones two days ahead of time without notification. So it's important to realize, and I want to resonate, we don't get a check. You may have a... A glitch in the system from the commissioner from the, the from the uh, permits. You could say that the uh, the data entries was went wrong. But no matter what you make on your end, we do not get a check. Our storefront is our check. People coming into our store is a check. And Councilman, you and I, excellent. I could have deliveries. I'm in the floors business. I could have something scheduled for two weeks from now being shipped in for Christmas with poinsettia plants coming from large greenhouses, and I could be blocked. And they're, they're sensitive to the, uh, the the temperature outside. So it destroys my business, destroys my whole flow of everything in these critical times. It's something that has to be addressed. Uh, I Again, uh, Councilman Holden, I'm glad you brought it to the forefront. Uh, we are losing business. And in these times, anybody who's left standing during this COVID situation should be applauded. Because what we're going through in the last year and a half, not drawing salaries, paying, maintaining, paying rent, and trying to forward, go forward. They say, how is business? Our business is like a bicycle. Once we stop pedaling legally, then we falter. So we want to make sure that we have the opportune time to make sure our space is open at all times. I do not get one iota business from the business movie industry. Not one iota. All the catering trucks that come outside park in front of across the street diner which is a slap in the face, and they have Jersey plates. So I want to know how New York is getting money from businesses coming from Jersey, selling food, and taking away from the local businesses. And it definitely upsets me. And I, the only thing I disagree with one of the councilmen, which was Jaeger, I do care if someone goes in there and buys a Diet Coke. I'd rather buy the bag of potato chips in a local store than take everything off the trucks that they supply. Our business to live off the streets, and we're being right now restricted and i would love to see a bill or something come up for compensation like robert holden said someone could be getting paid twenty four thousand dollars for their house why would i lose ten thousand dollars i don't understand so a business someone has to do a survey and see what businesses are losing not what the business is bringing to new york i don't see how 300 dollars permits make money for the city of new york i'll take out a permit for 300 dollars if i get eight blocks and use it for what i want I'd be more than happy. I'd have a street for every day. So how does that help me? I want to make sure that my business stays. I'm a third generation of business. My family's in New York for 100 years, way before most of your people. I know Mr. Holden has family generational like I have. And I don't want to shut off the instance where people, future generations, cannot stay in business because 
of the lack of concern what the movie industry is doing to us. We, we embrace them. We want them to come. We, I'm not taking away anybody's job. Don't take away mine. We do not make money. Our checks are every day. We do not get a check when that movie trucks are out there. So I want to thank you. If there's any questions you have or whatever, I'll be more than happy to give more. I don't want to ramble. I don't know how much time I have, but it's definitely affecting a lot of business. I'm also on the Chamber of Commerce, and we don't have to have a bid to be heard. We're independent people. A bid is something that's a self-taxation on a business again to get more city agency services. I'm against it. We're, we maintain our Thank you. We maintain our streets. You can finish. And thank you. We maintain our streets, and we want to have the respect from the industry to make sure that we can still have businesses. I have a, a foot doctor next door. They block the hydrants. The people can't get out of cabs or uh, ambulances to go to the foot doctor. So everything is blocked off, and we don't get nothing for it. So I agree with all of you, the councilman, Yonai uh, and um, Robert Holden. We definitely have to get more notice and leave things open so we can conduct our business in the right way. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tony Nunziato. And uh, I just have a, before um, uh, I, I call on my colleague, Councilman Yeager, to ask you a question, uh, I just want to stress that I agree that businesses should be compensated if they're blocked. You take up, a, a, and I see it in your district, by the way, because uh, Mr. Nunziato's business is in my district on Grand Avenue in Maspeth, and they've been, uh, they, they really had a lot of film shoots over the years, and I've seen the abuses. Way before I became a council member, there were abuses there. Um, I think there should, each um, uh, business that is being blocked or impacted on a, on a uh, commercial strip should be compensated by the film industry. In fact, I was able to get three businesses compensation uh, on the last uh, mix up on Metropolitan Avenue in Middle Village. Um, they got compensated a thousand dollars each by the industry, but that was not, they didn't do it voluntarily. They did it because they were wrong. They took up the, uh, the area and they're doing some damage control based on uh, some, uh, a plea from my office, but that shouldn't be, that should, that should be automatic. You're going to take away local businesses, then you should compensate them. And the industry is very wealthy, by the way, and um, th and they get tremendous tax breaks. But I just want to thank you, uh, uh, Anthony, uh, for your uh, testimony. Um, and again, you have been impacted over decades in your area, and I, and I do yes. you do know it. So thanks. Yes, uh, thank you for bringing it to the forefront. Uh, Council Member Yeager. Time starts. Thanks. I, I, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. I just want to clarify one thing. First of all, I do, I do care if they buy Diet Coke from the corner store. My reflection was that they don't. Uh, they never do any commerce in the neighborhood. They come in with their own catering trucks, their own everything trucks. They come in with all their stuff and they leave a mess behind, but they actually do no commerce whatsoever in our local neighborhoods, as you've reflected. Um, and although it's not a topic of this hearing, but I'll just reflect on on the topic of bids in general, uh, in this council, I vote against um, uh, increasing the amount that bids can charge uh, their neighbors. I view that as a tax, and I've spoken out about that. You are 100% right. What the bids are created to do, and I'm glad that you pointed this out at this hearing, and perhaps one day we can actually have a hearing that focuses on this. Bids are a creation of people in a community to compensate for services that they're already paying taxes for, that they're not receiving, and they feel no uh, um, alternative other than to create this other entity to provide these services. But they're not getting a tax reduction. What they're getting is a tax hike. And Correct. so that's the, the ultimate problem with bids. I'm going to leave it at that. It's not a question to you, but I just do want to say that on the record since you mentioned bids. It is very important that that be known throughout the communities in New York, where people are being charged by bids as a tax um, for services that the city has an obligation to provide and it's not providing. And thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman Yeager. Uh, Mr. Nunziato, do you have a response or anything to say? Yeah. Yes, I would do. Thank you, uh, Councilman Yeager. You're 100% right. Uh, just to, again, but it's not with the bids, but sometimes the, the uh, movie industry goes to the bids and gives them money, not independent stores. We don't have a bid. It could be anywhere from two to 4,000, if not more, per store per year. And if we don't pay it, we can have tax, we can have liens against the buildings if the person who owns the building or liens against the businesses. So it is a tax. And I pay enough taxes in the city of New York 
that I don't have to have an additional tax on me to have city services that I already should be given. So I'm totally, you know, we have people that coordinate things with lighting and making good the neighborhood, but a bid is that. It's a taxation on a business, which we already tax. And I, I would like just to say uh, thank you for realizing that, you know, none of the businesses are getting anything. And all the out-of-state, I would like to even look into all the out-of-state plates of the catering trucks who are doing the movie shoots, because I like to see how is that bringing money into New York. Thank you so much. Uh, back to uh, committee council, Irene. Thank you, um, Chair Holden, and thank you, Mr. Ninziata, for your testimony. Our next panelist is Joseph DiGandhi. Time starts now. How are you, everyone? Uh, thanks, Mr. Holden, for uh, bringing this up to the to the panel here. Uh, whatever Mr. Nunziato said is exactly, exactly the way we feel. Uh, my business is in uh, Middle Village on Metropolitan Avenue. Uh, we lose thousands and thousands of dollars every time these trucks are parked outside. And like he said, I have a business that uh, offers food and uh, hot lunches and meats. And these catering trucks come servicing all their people. Nobody comes into my business. So now here I am with 16 workers who are standing around all day long doing nothing, which I can't give them a day off because then it will hurt them and their families. And we get no business whatsoever and no help from this, uh, from this film industry at all, at all. Uh, it's been overwhelmingly getting worse for the past five years. They just come in, like you guys said, they are absolutely rude. Uh, if you ask them if they gonna, how long they're going to take or uh, any questions, if my customers could park and just to pick up an order, they tell us flat out, call the mayor's office. So if we're there... 365 days a year, and these guys just decide to show up every once in a while. I personally don't think that's right. We're the one supporting the community, and they come in, do their thing, and then leave after they make their mess. Uh, yeah. and, uh, that's about it. Thank you, Mr. Deganji. Uh, uh, by the way, did that that NBC uh, film shoot was were they the ones that were rude to you? Um, yes. That last that last film shoot was the ones that were rude to myself and the guy uh, who owns the fish store next to us, another small business next to us. And uh, remember the film shoot that was uh, Christmas week a couple of years ago. Um, yes. How much money do you estimate that you would lose on a particular shoot that that lasted almost a whole week, right I mean, before Christmas? Right before Christmas, my busiest time of the year. It's at least five thousand dollars per day between my workers and even the deliveries that we get in. It's an ongoing deliveries all day long during the holidays and they were stopping my guys from actually coming in and that, nobody offered you a dime right i think not e not even a penny no. uh, i so spoke to one one person once they said yes we'll call you don't worry by the time that time happened everything wrapped up the people left and nobody ever contacted us again right this is what i'm what we've been saying and this is they don't measure this by the way uh, joe they don't measure the city doesn't measure the impact on the small businesses and um, certainly um, they showed us at, again, a few weeks ago when they used your, in front of your store and the whole uh, north side of Metropolitan Avenue for at least, uh, I would say, 10 blocks almost, that they just took over all the parking and really without any kind of notice, and you, you called my office, right? Yes. yes. Because no posted, there were not, no messages posted, no signs posted. And the only thing you got from the industry, the film shoot company, call the mayor's office. Yeah. And again, this is the attitude, and this is the lack of oversight I was just mentioning that we need to correct. Because yes, I did contact the commissioner's office of Moam that day and the wheels started turning, but I wanted those, those, uh, those uh, trucks, which were oversized, and we're going to check if they had permits, but that blocked all those parking spaces and blocked the, uh, your, the view of your business. And you had people that were picking up orders. I had um, drug stores that were giving out uh, the vaccine that people couldn't get to because there was no parking whatsoever. And I think the mayor's office needs to understand this that we have to minimize the impact, and I said this over and over again, on our local businesses and on our residents, because it isn't not only impact on the businesses, but the residents that uh, frequent your stores uh, and the community. They could have come up with a different solution than parking vehicles 
in front of your store that day. And they had no respect for the small businesses in my district or in any district, because they see it as only a parking spot. And that's where we have to correct. And we're gonna change that mindset of the last thing we do. But again, I thank you for coming on. But um, if, you, if, you, if you or Mr. Nunziato has, uh, they have any uh, other suggestions, please reach out to my office. Uh, I do plan to uh, introduce legislation that will correct some of this, maybe compensate uh, every business that they block. And so I guess they might, uh, you know, uh, take up less spots on the street than if they're going to pay per business, which I think they should. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thanks so Absolutely. much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I currently do not see any additional witnesses or questions. If we have inadvertently missed anyone who has raised, who has registered to testify today and has yet have been called, please use the Zoom raise hand function. And I currently see none. And I will now turn over to Chair Holden for any closing remarks and to adjourn the hearing. Uh, thank you, Irene Bohofsky. And I, again, I want to thank the committee uh, on technology, the uh, uh, the staff. Uh, Irene Bohofsky has done a terrific job, and Charles Kim, and um, um, and, and all the staff uh, uh, that has really worked hard to make this uh, hearing possible. We're almost two and a half hours in. I think we accomplished a lot. We have a lot of uh, questions that went unanswered, and I hope that the uh, Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment will get us the answers, especially um, um, finding out how many 311 complaints. And by the way, I do plan to work with Dewitt, uh, who um, oversees or at least uh, runs 311, um, to really make it easier for the public and businesses to file complaints on 311 uh, against some of uh, you know these these uh, uh, the film industry if they're abusing anything on the permits and we do have to work with nypd to make sure that they provide the necessary oversight um, and we will do an investigation as to why my office was uh, not told the truth on a film shoot that was on metropolitan avenue that affected uh, uh, mr deganji's uh, business and many other businesses on metropolitan avenue i am not done with that and i do want to get to that um, uh, as quickly as possible i want to thank everyone uh, thank the commissioner's office uh, who um, uh, we grilled today, but it's in, it's important that we get um, some improvement uh, in um, the film shoots and uh, and less of an impact. Thank you, thank you so much, everyone, and uh, I'm going to adjourn this hearing. Thank you. <laughs>